This video takes the notion of a periodic signal discussed in the previous video and expands on that to introduce the concept of wavelength. Now you'll recall that the period of a periodic wave is represented by T, which is a measure of time, and that F is the frequency, and that the frequency is measured in hertz. Now, if I have a periodic wave like this one, then what I have plotted here is the amplitude in volts with respect to time. So as time progresses, I change the amplitude of this signal, and in the time it takes to go from this point to this point, I have covered one period. So if this time is one second and this time is two seconds, then the period T of this wave is one second because I go up and back down and then to the center in one second. Now the frequency of this reference wave is one because I go up and down and get back to my starting point. And in general, it is true that period equals one over the frequency. So with a time of one second, I have one second equals one over one hertz. But you'll recall that hertz are simply seconds to the minus one. So this, in fact, equals one second, and everything balances out just fine. Now, because the period measures this interval here, I could actually shift this over and see that the distance between this peak and this peak has the exact same length. So I can pick any point on this wave and the amount of time that passes from that point to the point where that bit of the wave repeats would be a measure of the period. However, these measurements have time on the x-axis. So at a given time, I will produce this many volts in the signal that I'm sending. But once the signal is transmitted into the world, it actually exists in space, although it is invisible, and can be measured using standard measurement lengths. And so this is where we get the notion of wavelength, which is represented by this Greek letter lambda. And so the wavelength of a signal is the actual real world measurement of the distance between these peaks. So if I'm generating this signal with a certain period, it means that every time a second elapses, I will have gone through this range of voltages. Now, once this signal is traveling through the air or through a wire, the actual distance between the peaks in the signal will depend on how fast the signal is moving through whatever medium it's moving through. And so because of this, it is always true that the wavelength equals the velocity of the wave times the period. And for most waves, the velocity is the speed of light, which is a constant represented by this little c. Now, for our purposes, it will be suitable to approximate the value of c as 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So given this, let's look at an example that uses some more realistic numbers. We're going to start off with a frequency of 2 megahertz. That is 2 times 
10 raised to the 6 hertz. If we want to find the period, we'll have to use this formula. Period equals 1 over F. So this equals 1 over 2 times 10 to the 6 hertz, which is equal to 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 6 all over hertz, which means that it's 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds, because hertz is simply 1 over a second. And this 10 to the minus 6 means that this is equal to 0 0.5 microseconds. So this is another Greek letter. This is a mu. And when you have a mu s, that represents microseconds. And a microsecond is simply 10 to the negative sixth of one second. So this is our period. And using that, we can determine the wavelength if the wave is traveling at the speed of light, which it would if it were being transmitted through the air. So the wavelength is V times T, which in our case is C times T, which we are approximating as 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and T and I'll go back to our original calculation in seconds, is 0 0.5 times 10 to negative 6 seconds. So if we multiply this out, we get 3 times 0 0.5 times, and then the 10 to the 8th and the 10 to the minus 6 come down to just 100. And the units that we're left with are meters over seconds times the one second. So these S's will cancel out and we'll simply have 1.5 times 100 meters, which is equal to 150 meters. So given the frequency, we can compute the period, and given the period, we can compute the wavelength, and we would also be able to reverse these calculations uh, as needed to get any of these unknowns given one of the values as an input.